Over 20,000 Russian troops trying to storm Chasivyar in Ukraine, their losses are mounting rapidly. Russian forces have concentrated their offensive actions on the city of Chasiv Yar in the Donetsk region. Currently, over 20,000 military personnel are storming the city, reported Nazar Voloshin, spokesperson for the operational strategic group Kortitsia. According to Voloshin, Ukrainian troops near the town of Chasiv Yar are facing units from the 217th Airborne Regiment of the 98th Airborne Division of the Russian Airborne Troops. Opposing us on the front line opposite Chasivyar are Russian paratroopers from the 217th Airborne Regiment of the 98th Airborne Division of Russia. It's around 20 to 25,000 Russian servicemen attempting to storm Chasivyar and the surrounding areas, Voloshin said. He added that Russia constantly and systematically assaults Ukrainian positions but fails to consolidate and retreats. The Russian army does not give up attempts to capture the city, disregarding losses in both manpower and equipment. There are no enemy Russian forces in the city. Currently, the city is ours. The situation around the city is complex, but it is under control. Our defenders receive reinforcements and stabilize the front, he said. Chasivya lies around 10 kilometers west of Bakhmut in Donetsk Oblast and 50 kilometers north of Avdiivka, cities Russia captured in May 2023 and February 2024, respectively. Russian troops have been focusing their efforts near Chasivyar, which they see as crucial for further advances towards Kostiantinivka, Kramatorsk and Sloviansk. Russia aims to capture Chasivyar in the Donetsk region before the Victory Day on May the 9th. If Ukrainian forces hold their ground, Russia's plans for a counter-offensive in June will be thwarted. Earlier, British intelligence reported that Russian forces attempting to capture Chasivyar in the Donetsk region are employing tactics similar to those used in Avdiivka. Occupiers are dropping numerous air bombs in this area. It's worth noting that Ukrainian military personnel are controlling the situation in the city of Chasivyar, the Donetsk region. However, the occupiers continue their assaults. U.S. Republicans call on House Speaker Johnson to resign or face firing over aid to Ukraine. Republican Party Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene declared that House Speaker Mike Johnson had betrayed Republican voters after lawmakers approved new aid to Ukraine. She threatens to initiate a vote for his dismissal if he does not resign, citing CNN. Mike Johnson's speakership is over. He needs to do the right thing to resign and allow us to move forward in a controlled process. If he doesn't do so, he will be vacated, Green said on Fox News. If Green and her supporters follow through on their threat to force a vote to remove him from the Speaker's position, Johnson will almost certainly have to rely on Democrats for his rescue, the publication writes. According to the channel, at least three Republicans support Green's position. Johnson insists he did not seek help from any Democrats. However, some of them have expressed readiness to save Johnson, especially after he challenged the right flank of the Republicans on foreign aid. Congressman Ro Khanna said that he would vote against the proposal to remove Johnson from the Speaker's post. I disagree with Speaker Johnson on many issues and I've been very critical of him, but he did the right thing here and he deserves to keep his job till the end of his term, he said. On April the 20th, the U.S. House of Representatives approved $61 billion in aid to Ukraine. Johnson's decision on whether to put the relevant bill to vote was crucial. The Speaker hesitated for a long time, conducting various consultations as he had already been threatened with removal from office. The New York Times, citing sources, reported that Johnson's decision was influenced by a meeting with senior national security officials who persuaded him of the urgency of providing assistance to Ukraine. Israel used a half-ton supersonic rampage missile to strike Iran. Israel's recent strike on Iran used a long-range supersonic missile and appears to have been a rampage air-to-surface missile, the Times of Israel reports. U.S. officials said Israel launched a missile attack on a military base near the city of Isfahan last Friday. Israel did not confirm the reports while Iran said there was minor damage. Although it is not yet known exactly what weapon was used in the strike, the Times of Israel writes that, based on photographs and damage from the strike, it can be said that it was a rampage missile. 
The Rampage missile was developed by Israel Aerospace Industries for use against targets such as communications and command centers, air force bases, maintenance centers and critical infrastructure. According to the company's website, the missile weighs 567 kilograms and is a precision long-range non-homing air-to-ground strike weapon. The 4.7-meter rocket can also travel at supersonic speed, making it difficult to detect and intercept using air defense systems such as the Iron Dome. Recall that Iranian-Israeli relations greatly deteriorated after Israel struck the Iranian consulate in Syria on April the 1st. In response, Iran attacked Israel with more than 300 missiles and drones on the night of April the 14th. And on April the 19th, information appeared that Israel responded by striking a military facility in the Iranian city of Isfahan. Military analyst Amir Bukbat, speaking on Israeli news platform Walla, described the exchange of blows as follows. Iran attacked Israel's rear with more than 500 weapons, including ballistic missiles, cruise missiles and drones, with 99% of them intercepted and a few that landed inside Israel, causing no real damage. The attacking side on April the 20th achieved a higher effect and damage with a tenth of the weapons used by the Iranians and presented the Islamic Revolutionary Guards helpless in defense and without any response. The attacker on April the 20th destroyed the radar of the S-300 system. The Iranians are now well aware that if needed, Israel is responsible for the wave of attacks at night in the Middle East. The next time, it may also attack nuclear facilities that are closer to the targets of the attacks.